Hello and welcome to the Blackstone Relationship Academy. Guess who I have here with me, these beauties. Today we're talking about the science of attraction, what makes somebody truly irresistible. So we're going to be talking about the science behind being attractive and irresistible because we know that black swans are completely irresistible. Mm -hmm. uh, so in case you don't know who we are, I don't know who would not know who we are, but you know, there might be a place where we're not known somewhere in the world. <laughs> We have Unique. Give them a wave and let them know. She's our style concierge. Hello, and hello, darlings. Hello, darling, she says. How are you? And then we have our Nadine, who is our highly sensitivity coach, who's also curriculum development. She's in charge of all these courses that you're all enjoying and fantastic coach here, the Black Swan Relationship Academy. And last but certainly, certainly not least, is Yvonne, who yes, is our Divorce. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, her Majesty, Her Royal Highness, is going to be sharing her thoughts today on the science of what makes a woman truly irresistible. Okie dokie, so let's get started. And I know who we're going to start with is going to be our style concierge. I think she should lead the way. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. we're going to let you wait and share her thoughts about what makes a woman irresistible over to you so I'm, I'm gonna start off with um saying hello welcome everyone do like share comment and you know subscribe links are in the description box book a call <laughs> do everything all the above but i was gonna kind of really look at it from the physical appearance because you don't really know someone's personality before you see them you kind of see them they're attracted to you so there's certain things key factors that draw us towards something that we like so the first thing is physical appearance um they like as much as we want to hide away from it we like people who've got good hair good skin because there's something about good skin that makes you look healthy mm -hmm. that makes you look like you're living your best life good hair just well manicured nails all of that it, it literally there's there's something about it gives <laughs> the idea that you're attractive, you're young, you're youthful, you look after yourself. And that in itself is attractive. I mean, if you look at all the celebrities, we we marvel at when they come out in our in our in our papers when they don't have their makeup on. And it's like because then we kind of normalize them. But normally when we see them on the screen, we think we're thinking, oh my God, they're so attractive. So as a black swan, you know that's what we do. We we look after your style, we tell you to look after your hair, your nails, make sure that you present yourself in a certain way that the man that you're attracting will find pleasant, right? And the other thing I was going to say is body language as well. It's like we all, we really have to train ourselves to be open. Um, you sitting across a table folding your hands, it's just really closed. And you're like, body language will always say something. And there's that whole thing where 93% of our communication is, is nonverbal. Mm -hmm. So you have to practice to be open, practice to be articulate, practice to have really good body posture, sit up straight, mind your manners, all that kind of stuff that makes you even extra attractive. And um, the last thing I was going to kind of touch on is your smell as well. We humans, as much as we don't like to think about it, we emit pheromones, right? Mm -hmm. and, and even when we when say when you're going shopping, you're ovulating, go out on dates, when you're actually ovulating, because you're at your, at your, at the height of your feminine prowess. Mm -hmm where you can really attract the, ma the mate that is right for you. Because it may not just be, it's not just the physical side, it's the mental side. It's, it's also if your body likes them as well. And this is where your femininity comes in. It's like you really need to feel someone. Do, 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 do they make your body happy? Do they make you smile from inside out? You know, do they, do they make your eyes light up? Do they make the world light up? And you can only really do that when you actually smell what they're like and your body kind of takes in their essence and this is just purely on a physical level of course there's a lot more layers to this but just kind of looking at it from just a physical level and you have to kind of embody all of these qualities that we're going to talk about today and I'll kind of leave it at that and so we can kind of go through all the others that everybody else has to say I might as well take over the whole show. <laughs> we should have had the show with the, with the concierge for this one I'm sure because there's so much that we can share but I love um, your um, the signaling of how we dress smell is something that I don't think we take seriously enough to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Mm -hmm. 
and body language as well. And just to add to what you're saying about body language is mirroring somebody's body language yeah. is something that really is attractive because we are drawn to people that we trust more. And so if yeah. we're really good at mirroring their energy and mirroring their body, they're looking this way and you're looking the same way, um, you know, and mirroring if they cross their legs and your legs are crossed, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it sends a subliminal level that you are safe yeah. and that you know them. So I think obviously there's more to be said about this. And I think we oh, yeah. flirt and date masterclass, but I feel like these are really kind of overlooked. I think we, you know, I was in the gym the other day and I'm not going to be too long, but I really just want to emphasize this. But I was in the gym the other day and um, my PT was saying to me, look, Chengi, because I have kind of lower back issues, which is why I have to have him around to make sure I'm doing it right. And he said, look at your feet. And my feet were like literally maybe just an inch. One was in front of the other and one. And he was like, that kind of stuff messes with your pop, messes with your back. You have to make sure your feet are exactly in alignment so that you don't, you know, put too much on your back. So, you know, for me, I realized we all kind of go to the gym and we just stand and we just lift, right? We don't really know. And I think we kind of do that in dating. We just kind of show up. And we just move yeah, over. Stand. We just sit down. We just sit over there. You know, we're never really thinking about the dynamics. And God forbid, if you're in the same room as a black swan, you're going to get screwed because she's going to get all the boys, right? <laughs> because she's <laughs> intentional and deliberate. About positioning as well. Mm-hmm. Exactly. How she says, how she's moving, the pace she's moving at, how she's... Mm. So things like body language, a whole class, a whole workshop, but really, really important and, you know, to the science of them. So that's all I wanted to add to that. And I'm sure we'll revert back. There's so much more. Without exactly. Without. Absolutely. I'm sure we'll revert back at some point. So let's hear from Nadine. What are your thoughts? What do you think makes a woman um, irresistible? I think it's how you feel. Of course, I'm going to talk about how you feel and your emotions inside. It's like, if you are already on that mindset of like, I don't feel beautiful. I don't feel, and it, when I say beautiful, you have to be comfortable in your own skin. So yes, you know, mm-hmm. dress way, like have a hairstyle, you feel comfortable, have a clothing, but again, it, it's internal because you could doll yourself up on the outside, but if you're not believing mm-hmm. the about yourself, then that's going to actually, people are going to sense that, especially a men, because mm-hmm. they're going to, they're going to kind of find who's feeling like, oh my goodness, like, I'm, I don't feel beautiful. And then that person's going to attract, you know, you don't want someone to be complimenting you and make, you have to have own it. Like you Mm -hmm. have to, you have to know that, yeah, I'm beautiful. I got this and you have to actually do that. And how you would do that is talk affirmations. You would do things that you love, do things that you enjoy. And that makes you attractive because as you're doing things that you love, as you feel comfortable about yourself, it actually mm-hmm. transmits people see that and then you become attracted because this person's like, this man is like, who is this person? Mm-hmm. How is she so confident in her own self? Why does she love who she is? So I would say it's more about, it's, I think it's like kind of a counterpart what Unique said about looking well, but it's also kind of incorporating how you feel. Yeah. It's a combination, right? So that's Absolutely. like, how I would feel. I don't think one, and and that's the beauty. I love that you went next because I hadn't planned this, but I think it's perfection. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because to be what Unique is talking about and to be that congruent, that inner work, because if you don't feel beautiful, you don't dress beautiful, you don't move beautiful, you don't sound beautiful. I find that we kind of think, it can be, I mean, there are women that are immaculate, but are so low self-esteem, yeah. right? And I find that beautiful girls who who really kind of spend, spend attention to themselves can sometimes neglect that inner vibration yeah. that yeah. I'm fabulous. Mm. And, you know, something that you said, Nadine, that I think was really important was this feeling that, look, I am fabulous, you know, as I am, And I don't need the validation from outside in. Mm. That Mm. is powerful. When I enjoy the attention, I enjoy the compliments from a guy, but I don't need it because a lot of women get manipulated through compliments. Mm. Yeah. By the time it's the first time in a long time, anyone has told you that you're pretty or you're beautiful and you haven't been doing that in a work where you tell yourself and you know when a man compliments you it shouldn't be really <laughs> even if you don't say it it shouldn't yeah. feel like oh 
say it again or I'll die. It should be a nice glow, you know. Uh, oh, thanks. <laughs> but it shouldn't be a surprise. It shouldn't come to you yeah. like, you know, and that comes with the feminine practices of always looking after yourself and knowing how to do that properly uh, in the way that you look and the way that you smell and everything. And it also comes with the meditations, the affirmations, the constant looking inwardly. So that I think is a powerful dynamic. I think a woman who is, emotional and who is um emotionally together physically together is a powerhouse of irresistibility i'm just great thank you nadine who might revert back to you but let's hear from yvonne what do you think makes a woman absolutely irresistible as far as you're concerned right as far as i'm concerned and taking it from the woman who's married or in a long-term relationship or mm -hmm. um has um just started dating um someone and you know the someone it could be a few months into it one of the things that is very, 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 very easy for us to do is to revert back to type. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got him yeah. now, so you don't need to try. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've been with him. He's seen um, every time he takes you out somewhere, you look oh, so fabulously gorgeous. So he believes that, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you wake up looking the way you do. You are just so absolutely gorgeous. And then he mm -hmm. st spends the night at your house and realizes oh so what <laughs> happened you know and that happens also when we've been married for a little while and we mm. don't um want to keep the mystery going in who we are mm. I work from home and in working from home my husband comes in um most evenings and I'm here so if I'm he's going to come home every evening and he finds me um sitting there in joggers head tied no makeup on glasses just sit and, and can barely say anything to him whilst I know he loves me but where is the excitement where is the the caring am I saying that every time he shows up I'm looking oh so gorgeous well put together and ready to greet him at the door with a drink and take his bag from him no that's not how it is but what I do is make sure that when he comes home, other than, uh, you know, me being tidy and looking my very best, he doesn't know who I'm going to be when he walks through. I surprise him with, you know, doing something silly. I hear the key in the door and I might get up and go to it and shut the door and say, who is it? What's the password? And, you know, <laughs> oh, come on, everyone, I'm tired. What's the password? <laughs> and, you know, we come in and he'll say to me, but you're mad. <laughs> So he doesn't, you know, uh, know, or sometimes I'll go in the kitchen knowing that he's coming in. I'll run in the kitchen and I'll be doing so. He'll say to me, so you're hiding from me. No, you found me and I'm there <laughs> in play sight. And, you know, so because he doesn't know and the same thing when we're going out, we'll be laughing, we'll be talking, we'll be joking. I make the effort in making sure that um, he, I stimulate him. But more mm. importantly, I stimulate me. I mm. make sure mm. that the things that I'm doing, it's as Nadine says, that, you know, I do it for me. One of the things that you were talking about when you talk about affirmations, I look in the mirror and tell myself what it is I see. You're going to have a great day today. Look at you. You mm. know, what are you going to conquer? Who are mm. I, um, you know, you, do you want to be and you know, everything that you need to tell yourself, tell yourself it and don't stop telling yourself until you be um, believe it, because, uh, mm. you know, the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. It is too easy for somebody else to catch your person's attention. It is mm. too easy. Yeah. And mm. all they did was just they didn't even say anything. But, you know, mm. what? their energy resonated with his energy yours mm. used to but now yours has gone three four five even maybe ten runs down the ladder mm. only because he thought well I've got him now so I don't need to try <laughs> it's when you mm. have him is that's the time you try hardest because there are too many other voices out there there are too many other um, people out there who are also looking at them because you know what when you see 
a person out there and you see a man and the man is looking oh so fine, you better believe that there's somebody behind him who is making him look so fine. And the fact that there's somebody behind him and he may not want to tell you, you yourself should know mm -mm. somebody's making you look that way. Somebody's taken the time to make sure that shirt is pressed. This is happening. That is happening. You're looking good. You're smelling good. So why shouldn't you be the same? It should be that when you and him are walking out and he goes ahead of you a little bit, there's somebody who is coming towards you, checking him, you out, and he sees that you're being checked out. So he knows to take your hand and say, come on, darling, let's go. Because you know what? <laughs> if you're by yourself for too long, he doesn't want somebody saying, here's my number, uh, you know, and it can happen. So don't think that just because there's somebody in your life that you stop trying whatever it was you did to get him up it by five and when <laughs> that then becomes familiar up it by another five and keep up in it so that you're always um fresh in the game and your energy is on point whenever the two of you come together mm -hmm. absolutely love yeah i love that too and i think you said something and I could hear the cring the cr some cringe cringes in the comment section right now in the chat, in the chat, the chat is going, you know, and the chat will be saying, but why do I have to up it? Why do we always have to do things to keep a man? Yeah. And I love that you said that because we do have the reality that somebody else will easily take the eye of your person. Mm. I, I, I don't know what it is. I think within the now, we can't live in fear of that. No. But it is an absolute reality. A better dressed woman is going to captivate his eyes. Mm -hmm. A more confident, internally powerful woman is going to captivate his energy. The reality of it is as much as we hate to admit it. Mm -hmm. You're not with this man in a bubble. Mm. You know, yes. in a little yes. bubble in the two of you. Yes. Now, obviously, commitment is commitment. But sometimes we do things or omit things that make it easy -er, right that make even a good man think you know what <laughs> just one time right because <laughs> because like you said you're married now you've let yourself go forget yeah. the the times when you used to actually make an effort and do your hair and do your makeup and actually yeah. joke with him at the door. Now he just walks in and it's like, you're all right. Yeah. Well, your food is in the, in the <laughs> yeah. <tree." laughs> you know, and you no longer do that inner take care of yourself. work. And I think it's easy to do in a relationship. Mm -hmm. isn't it? Oh yeah. Definitely. Can I say something? Sure. Um, like, you know, a wise, a wise person told me that the best practice is in the time when you're single, like in the yes. sense of the stillness, because mm -hmm. I never really understood that before because my attitude in life was, well, I'm working my inner self. Why do I really have to like, you know, mm. take care of the outer? That's so vain, right? But the thing is, it's not for that person. It's actually for you. So as you maintain yeah. yourself in this, you know, being happy with the perfumes you like, the makeup, mm -hmm. the exercises you like, and you're working on yourself, as you attract that person, you're not going to stop once you find that person. It's a maintenance, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's it's like anything else you do with your body, like, you know, hygiene wise or whatever you do, you don't stop when another yeah. person comes to do it for yourself. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I find yeah. that as you do that, it helps. I, I went to the gym um, yesterday and I saw two couples, you know, they, they were married, they were working, to, working out together. And the thing was like, my attitude, I don't know their, I don't know their story, but the thing is that what made me smile was here are people working on themselves. I don't, they're working to feel better about yourself because what my yeah. hope is, you know, regardless if I'm in a relationship or not in a relationship, I want to start having these practices mm. to feel good about myself because the more you feel good mm. about yourself, inner and outer, mm. it translates to not only the person yeah. you're with, but everybody yeah so it's like it shouldn't yeah. stop it should be a lifetime so yeah. I think it's such a it's it's not getting that man or trying to keep them they'll leave it's how yeah. you feel about yourself and feeling confident yeah. about yourself yeah. right and that's I was going to add to Nadine's point as well because it's really about maintenance I know we kind of touch on physical internal it's it's about all of it it's like mm. you can't stop the inner work you can't mm. stop the outer work. You can't yeah. stop the mental work. You can't mm -hmm. stop the physical work and your spiritual work. It's mm -hmm. a consistent doing one bit at a time yes. to be an overall amazing person, which yeah. all of us are individually. Yeah. And it's like, even now, as, as we're growing, like we're all, we continuously discover 
different things about ourselves. We continue to discover, okay, oh, this is what I'm like in this situation kind of thing. And even when you're dating, the whole point of dating is to really see what you're like, how you maneuver. It's not just about the guy. It's how do you maneuver in those spaces? Like how do you, how does your body language look like? Well, what does it look like when someone you sit across makes you feel unsafe? Mm-hmm. Like what, and you, you continue to observe yourself and you grow. And when we talk about growth, it's not just um your your internals, you also need to grow physically. You also mm-hmm. need to grow and like, like like you know, I always laugh at times like when you look back at I had a a, um, a look back at some of the pictures and you see like how I used to do my brows and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like, you know, you, you draw the line and like <laughs> all, all the things that we used to do and you grow and everything mm-hmm. is really about growth. Yeah. And there's nothing as attractive as someone who embodies that growth mindset yes. mm-hmm. and it shows up in everything that they do, right? Yeah. 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 And do you know, there's something that both you and Nadine said that I wanted to um, uh, buttress. And, you know, when you said that when you work on yourself and you're doing the work, because when you're working on yourself, you're going out. And I think the most time that a woman is at her most attractive is when she's doing something that she loves. And that's Mm. when you truly see her when she's doing that. And what what makes us as women attractive to men is, you know, um, the scenario that's in my head, you know, you're in um, either a bar, a club or at a gig and your group is playing and they're playing one of your favorite songs and you've got a drink in your hand and you're dancing away and singing at the top of your voice and you're having a good time and nobody else is in the room but you and your band and you're just listening and serenading them on your own. When you look across at that woman, you're seeing somebody who is, she doesn't have a care in the world. Everything Mm -hmm. in that moment is... She is just ravishing to him and he just really wants to get to know her. And you know yeah. what I believe and nobody can tell me differently. What he meets you doing, he's going to make sure that as you guys grow, you're still going to be doing the same thing. So it can't be that, you know, I used to go to gigs. Now that I'm in a relationship, I don't. <laughs> I used to do. And now, you know, I yeah. don't know. You still go out. You still enjoy the things that you enjoy because it was in that moment of um, enjoyment. He saw you. Something captivated him. You happened to look up. Your eyes met across the room. You smiled and continued doing what you was doing. And then the next thing you know, he had inched his way. And, you know, he, you looked around and there he was standing next to you. And you oh, hello. And, yeah. and the, you know, years later, you're married. Where is that vivacious woman gone? And, you mm-hmm. know, you're not going to, I'm not saying it's, you have to be in a, you know, a gig every week, but at least make sure that you're still doing those things that you like, do the things Mm. that bring joy to your heart. Even if you do them with your girlfriend and you go out and you come back and you've had such a great time with her and you come back and everything about you is great and, you know, you hug him. Oh, I had such a fabulous time. You never guess what Unique and Chengi was doing. And then you're talking about, and Nadine joined us online. Oh, we had, and, you know, oh, you're so excited about him. You can bet your life you are going to have a wonderful evening because, Mm. you you know, everything changed and we must continue doing what we do and do the things that we do because that is also um, attractive when somebody finds you out there doing what you love doing. Absolutely. And I'm wondering, I'm going to ask you ladies this question. I'm wondering what are the stories we tell ourselves that make us stop? Because I think if we can recognize some of our stories, that what is it that kicks in, do you think, or has kicked in for you in the past, where you've made an effort, made an effort, what is the story you're telling yourself that makes you stop doing all of these things? Or even, I know for you, Unique, you deal with so many of our clients and so many women all over the world. Mm -hmm. What stops them from taking that leap to fixing their outer world? What are the stories they're Mm -hmm. telling? themselves um so for each of you you know randomly yeah. whatever, let me know what you believe because I think if our audience can identify with the stories then mm-hmm. maybe we can mm-hmm. give them a different story what do you what do you yeah think? yeah I think, I think it's it's a- no so are you okay 
<laughs> no, no, go ahead. Go go ahead. ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's intention more than anything. It's our we owners have to continuously analyze our intention. Because mm. if your intention is off, you're going to do it for the wrong reasons. Mm. You always have to check yourself. Like you will get someone who come on the on, on, on the course or come to, 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 to coach because they want their ex back and mm. come and change that. I want to change my Instagram. I want to change this and change that. But you always have to check the intention because so what if you get them back? You lost them the first time. What's stopping it from happening there? Mm. And it's for me, it's always the intention. It's like, why am I dressing the way I'm dressing? Is it to please someone else or is it for me? Do I feel good in this? And it's like that whole embodying. If I feel good in something, the energy of that is going to flow through to everything else. And mm -hmm. I'm doing it because I, I, I want to feel good. And whoever now comes in my circumference is going to feel good because they're going to feed off that energy, pour into it. And the more I feel good, someone else is going to feel good. And I'm going to literally gain that habit of always feeling good and dressing because I want to feel good. That's my intention. It's about me. It's about my internals. So I think the story we tell ourselves sometimes is, apart from the intention of it, is, well, once I've got him, I can stop, right? I, mm. I don't have to continue pleasing anyone. Once I've got him, I can stop. But again, if when you haven't checked your intention, that's the story that will be running protocols on mm. you. And when you do get him, you are going to stop. And then three, four months later, you're like, but what happened? And it's because, first of all, you are presenting the ego side of you. You're presenting an avatar. You're not really presenting your authentic self. So when you really are always presenting your authentic self, it's like whether he comes or goes, it doesn't matter more than anything. So there's that God him story, right? Yeah. Like I'm getting yeah. that we tell ourselves the got him story, get him story, got mm -hmm. him story. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason, that story equals no more effort required. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, I'd like to turn it around. It's more, even on men, actually, especially men, they tend to do this quite a lot. Like they will do what needs to be done for mm -hmm. the first week, for the first two weeks, for the first three weeks until they get you, then they relax. Mm -hmm. yes. and you always get that kind of report like women kind of like oh he's not taking me out as much and we always continuously have to 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 talk about our needs because this is what I need da, 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 da. but as much as we do the work we expect the men to do the work as well because we mm -hmm. are now an academy that coaches men as well and it's like it is the onus is on all of us to put mm -hmm. in effort mm -hmm. if that's how you started this is where this is like the baseline and it goes up from here it shouldn't mm -hmm. be kind of dwindling, you know, that kind Absolutely. of thing. I think men do a lot more of that when it comes to relationships. So they've got the got her story and got and get her yeah. story. Yeah. And that's, I think, something that Yvonne was talking about earlier about when you started at five, you now have to be at 10 mm -hmm. because you have to not have that story. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. What do you think, Nadine? Um, I was doing another angle. I think what happens in some people um, is there's a fear, a fear of trying, a fear of like putting yourself out there emotionally and attractive mm -hmm. because it's a fear that if I try, if I go out there and someone notices, I might not have the experience. I might not know what to do. I might mm -hmm. lose that person. I might get rejected. So you, so sometimes you may go into this thing, well, you know what, if I don't try and I don't put the effort emotionally or, you know, externally and internally, then I'll be safe because I can control the dynamics. But what happens mm -hmm. Regardless if you try or not try, you're going to still, you, there's going to be two options. If you don't put yourself out there and try, you're going to be alone because you're afraid of not trying. But then yeah. if you do go out there, there's always going to be some kind of rejection. You know what I mean? It's like how you deal with it. It's like, you just have to put your foot out there. But I think that's what holds some people back is like, I don't have the experience. I don't know what to do. I've never done it before. Or if I try, I'm going to get all this attention. But the thing is, you, you need to show your light. And the thing is, in the world today, you're going to have people that like you and people that don't like you. It's how you deal with it. But I think it's that fear of being rejected and the emotion that comes behind it. So if you don't even start, then you won't mm. get the rejection. But in mm. a way, you're kind of feeling that anyways. But mm. I think that's one thing is like being hidden of sorts to keep yourself safe. Mm. That's a big mm. theme. That's absolutely a big mm. theme. I think a lot of people watching will relate to that. And, you know, the key there is rejection, the fear of rejection, right? But then the stories we tell mm. ourselves are around, like you said, uh, what if I get chosen? What do I do with that? Because sometimes we fear success as well, don't we? Yeah. Um, 
you know, um, then we've got stories of I might get rejected, but they're all a whole bunch of stories, right? And it's really important for us to realize that we are telling ourselves a set of stories. And when we deal with those stories, we deal with that, we we uncover and some unconscious blocks and unconscious beliefs mm. so that we can actually step into it. Because it's all well and good for us to come here and say five ways and seven ways, and these are the ways. Yeah. But the reason people don't take action is usually because of these stories so we've got the comfort story the i got her i'm i've got what i need so effort and then we've got mm. the fear story and fear has so many stories what are mm. your thoughts yvonne what what stories My, do you think um one is it's the external voices that speak uh to mm. us that gets mm. us to mm. um abort mission and mm. abort mm. uh what we've got and just actually sit down because Sometimes we think the people who we have in our lives and, you know, the ones that are closest to us are ride or die. Mm. They mean us the world of good. And sometimes they don't. And if you listen to what is going on in the manosphere right now, it isn't pretty out there what some men are saying. Mm. Uh, you know, women only want this. They want, they want, they want. And, you know, uh, they are doing I um, heard someone uh, say to me um, the other day that it's become a thing now where you would say to a guy I've got no money to buy something to wear out for the date so mm -hmm. send me the money and you know and then this is just backing up what the manosphere is saying mm -hmm. about us so when you find somebody or when somebody finds you and you know you're in the relationship it isn't secured because mm -hmm. you are number one reverting to type which is what he was told that you know they're going to do this as soon as they get you you're going to do this you're either going to gain weight mm -hmm. you're going to you're going to and the list of gonna is long the externals out there pay, unfortunately plays plays a lot in the lives of um especially women because we'll listen to a friend when things go um you know you're mm -hmm. you've hit that bump well, listen to her. She gives you the wrong advice and um, you follow it and then you lose him and you wonder, so what did I do wrong? He may listen to what they are saying out there in the men's world and the things go south so people are not number one being given the right information and number two we stop communicating and when we're not mm -hmm. communicating what our needs are then it basically it's a free-for-all everybody can do because he'll say but you never told me she'll say but you didn't I didn't know why didn't you say and everybody's saying why didn't you say and nothing is actually mm -hmm. being you know accomplished so it really is down to honing your communication skills whilst you're single and not just honing your um, um, communication skills, but know who your people are, know who the people are that you can go to. And I know I can go to Chengi and I'll say to her this, 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 and this. She's not going to say, I'll just pack your bag, girl, I'll come and stay with me. <laughs> do, do you get what I mean? She's going to, okay, Yvonne, so what, what's your um, part in all of this? What did you do? How are you doing it? How did you say it? You know, ask the right questions and we don't yeah. do that. We're too easy to get out, um, mm. you know, and do. I love that because that's something we totally overlook, right? The stories other people are telling us. Mm. Yes. And the stories we're listening to and the stories mm. we're buying into. And it's so funny because I was listening to, I went on YouTube today and T.D. Jakes, somebody was kind of playing a clip of T.D. Jakes and he was like, look, stop taking advice from, if you're married, don't be taking advice from your single friends. Yes. You know, um, not because single friends cannot have wisdom. Clearly with some yeah. as coaches, some of us are unmarried, but wisdom flows, right? Mm. Um, but not everybody has our anointing, yes. and our function, <laughs> right? And sometimes we do surround. And I did find myself, I think everybody on this call, the coaches on this call anyway, you know, you know, I was kind of having a mental situation with a story I was telling myself about a certain gentleman. And I realized that because their stories are a lot more balanced, I was able to correct my story, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I'd been with a whole other bunch of people, I would have gone with the internal story that's wrong yes. or followed a different story because there is um, a story for every relationship. There's, oh, yeah. you know, there's a story people want to project yes. on, 
on your mm-hmm. setup. So I think we do need to be careful that some of the stories we're telling ourselves may not be our personal stories. They may not have come from within us. They may have come from outside of us. Mm. I know. I love that you said that to raise a point as well. That whole thing of knowing yourself was Nadine was saying. When you know yourself, no one else can actually tell you what your story is. Yes. It's like you, you can check yourself. Your friends go, you need to check yourself, mm. girl. But the, when you really know what your story is and what you're dealing with and you're true to yourself, Mm-hmm. It, it's that's that's one way to actually combat that whole thing of listening to outer stories because no one can tell you about yourself like the men will tell you oh my god you're gorgeous you're this you're that and funny story um a cousin of mine once told me that you back home they call me you he's like you I think I was like 20 in my 20s it's like the thing is you're a beautiful girl men will go heaven high water to literally just be in your pants for the night to say I like the beautiful girl so be careful guard your heart and I, I I always hold true to that like no one can come and tell me like oh god you're so gorgeous and I'm offline I mean sometimes I can be delulu and <laughs> I'll do I'll, it but I'll check myself and we're gonna let's come back to ourselves yes mm-hmm. you're beautiful because God made you in his image and we're all like that and those are the internal stories that have that we have to guard mm-hmm. like you know with with our heart like the, the mm-hmm. true essence of who we are mm-hmm. The pretty girl stories. I love mm-hmm. that you 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 mentioned that because I think we forget the pretty girl stories too. I think a lot of beautiful women often don't get told enough. And I yeah. know people think that beautiful women just go around being told, oh, you're so beautiful, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. Yes, they might hear it um, maybe more, but they know that they usually have so much insecurity because we, Beautiful yeah. women don't look at themselves from outside of themselves. They look at themselves from within themselves. So they're mm-hmm. always projecting their insecurities to the way they look. They're projecting the stories to the way they look. They, there's all of that going on. And I find that all it takes is for a man to come and say, hey, you're beautiful. And mm-hmm. he's the one, right? Yes. And I would the defenses are like shh, down. So, you know, and also I find, I think I did a, a video that beautiful women are the hardest to coach. It's very difficult mm-hmm. to get a beautiful woman to do inner work. Because often yeah, she attracts definitely. physically. So she thinks she has the ability to attract a man. Mm-hmm. Attraction mm-hmm. is is so layered and is so deep that yeah. you can physically bring a man to you. Um, but to keep him around, it's all that inner work. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I think that those are pretty girl stories as well. Mm-hmm. On, but there's a danger too, though. There's There's some women who are beautiful but don't feel they're beautiful. So what also ends up happening, they meet someone who may, because they're already, again, it goes back internally because they already have this, I wouldn't say weird, but kind of a different perception of what other people see and what they see. Mm. Then what happens is that, you know, someone will give them the world or say, you're so beautiful. And sometimes some, unfortunately, some men kind of pick up on that where they know that this person needs that kind of, yes. they're not all, I'm, not, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to stereotype all people. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that some people may pick up on that, you having that low self-esteem and then you feel like you need that person to mm-hmm. lift you up. Mm-hmm. So yeah. again, that's another angle because you'll look at that person and say, you're beautiful, but they don't feel it, mm-hmm. right? So that kind of, it's kind of like a domino effect. So that's another angle too with yeah. the pretty, well, like some people don't yeah. think they're beautiful. Mm-hmm. and they're and they are beautiful right yeah and you know uh to buttress what you've said uh nadine you also have the girl who's pretty but everyone her family has told her that she isn't especially mm-hmm. her siblings have said you know what you are whatever it is that they you know um want to tell you and that in itself um you're brought up thinking then I'm the unattractive one. And when somebody tells you you're pretty, you find it so hard to actually um, accept that because you've heard it for so long, um, you know, that these negatives that uh, go on in our head, our, um, and it feeds our egos. So when the man comes along and he says, oh, you know, be still my beating heart around you. Mm-hmm. You're thinking, okay, he, you know, wants to gain to my knickers. He wants this, he wants, and he wants, and he wants. 
actually he wants to get to know you because you're mm -hmm. just the right person for him but because yeah. of your own insecurities and your own se low self-esteem you feeling that you're not worth it it doesn't go any further and when we talk mm -hmm. about you know doing the inner work working on yourself for anyone out there who hasn't heard this before and wonder what are we talking about we're actually talking about the soulmate attraction system because that is the quickest way for anybody out there to begin the work on themselves and finding mm. their own path in, in their self, their journey of self-discovery. Because unless you know who you are, you won't know what it is that you want. And anybody can come and tell you anything and you accept it and think, well, oh, look at him, but he's so fine, though, and he's got a suit on and he's leaning on a car. So that must be his. It's his friend's car, the suit he borrowed from somebody <laughs> to come and meet you. And as a wedding, as a groomsman. Yes. <laughs> and he's got like the last five women that he's dated, he's taken from them and left three of them um, with babies that <laughs> they're mining. And you think, oh, but he likes me. Oh, no, he'll be different with me because you don't, you know, you didn't make do your vetting properly. And all the things that you're supposed to do, you had nothing put in place. The only thing that you had put in place was the fact that he says you're beautiful, the first person to have ever told you, then he must be my husband. Absolutely. No. You know, I, as we kind of conclude this amazing episode that I know we could probably talk yeah. for ever and ever and ever, uh, and we'll be, we will be coming back at you every Tuesday. So make sure you are tuned in. <laughs> and um, yes, as we sort of round this off, I think I would sort of conclude and I'm, I'm sure I'll let the ladies, you know, give you the final analysis of, of, of what they want to leave you with. But my conclusion with all of this is really, I guess, like Yvonne saying, the soulmate attraction system course where I have really truly learned in my years of A, dating myself, coaching thousands of women to date, um, that nothing beats truly knowing your value and your worth. Yeah. The moment you know your value and your worth and you make a call to unique and she says, you're not wearing that, you're wearing that, or let's put that with that. Mm -hmm. You don't argue with that because you mm -hmm. understand that you are dressing your outer self to meet your inner self. You don't resist oh, yeah. that. And you don't not make that phone call. You know, you do make it because you now understand that, look, my shell has to look appropriate to my inner world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when you have that right, you're not depending on the look. Mm -hmm. You're depending mm -hmm. on that inner work. Listen, the most irresistible woman in the world is a woman that is healing. Yes. Healed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because why? That's my point that I was going to leave behind. She is a challenge. Yep masculine energy men will beg you for easy mm. will move like you're easy they'll position you for easy hey i'm just gonna come over can i come over <laughs> they will do the how can i get away you see you have to understand that many men ask for what they know they're not entitled to yes yeah they will beg for intimacy that they know they've got no business to. They will beg for access that they know they've got no business getting. But when you are not healed, yes. when you are not whole, when you're mm. not doing the work, guess what you will do? You will self-abandon. Yeah. You will compromise yourself, not in the situation. You won't be compromising in the situation as in let's compromise. You'll be compromising yourself. And the one thing that a man can resist is an easy woman. An easy woman, an easy to access woman, an easy to manipulate woman, an easy to, to maneuver woman is not, I repeat, an OT with caps bold and underlined. <laughs> She's not irresistible. She's common. She's chicken. She's really common. And it doesn't matter how well she speaks or whether she puts black underscore black swan after her name on Instagram or whether she has been watching this YouTube channel for the last, from the day he was conceived. Yeah. Um, no matter what position you're in, if you know 
that you can't hold your own, you can't defend your thoughts, you can't defend your heart, you can't protect your feelings, you can't protect yourself in a healthy feminine way. You, you, a date can happen in the next five minutes if he calls. You're yeah, that girl, yeah. you know, um, and how you show up is how you show up. You, you di- The mirror did not inform anything. You, mm-hmm. you looked in the mirror, but it didn't say anything back to you. It didn't say, girl, that... Mm-mm, that's not <laughs> working right and you don't care that the mirror never speaks to you you just think i'm covered on i or whatever it is or that's in fashion isn't it mm. ladies you know the most irresistible quality in a woman is inaccessibility now somebody said to me don't say inaccessibility is too harsh it is too harsh it is a harsh word but sometimes we have to jar ourselves into yes. understanding yeah. that if yes. you can be accessed so quickly mm. Um, then you you lose the irresistible factor. But you can't Mm. play games to be irresistible because energy never lies. You actually have to do the work. Over to you, Unique. What are your thoughts? What are your final thoughts? I was actually going to add to that. It's like all of these things that we covered in the world, like like the the designer handbags, they're, they're accessible, but really inaccessible. You have to have a certain level of income to get them. Mm. You have to have a certain level of of disposable income at that to be able mm-hmm. to afford them. It's like otherwise you kill yourself trying to get one. Mm-hmm. Um it, it's it's that whole idea of inaccessibility is so attractive. Mm-hmm. It's like we all want what we can't have. Right. And it's not that it's playing games, it's just it's human nature. Mm-hmm. We all want what we've been told, no, you cannot have that. And then we work our lives trying to prove ourselves, no, I am actually like that. And you as an amazing black swan woman deserve a man who's willing to say you know what i'm worth this woman i am going to work for her i'm Mm -hmm. going to invest in her because while he's investing in you he's falling in love with you Mm -hmm. you are helping him to challenge himself he's not falling in love with the fact that he's chasing you he's falling in love with the fact that you are changing him to raise his standards to a higher level Mm. love it that's what's irresistible Mm -hmm. what are your final words nadine as we say goodbye to our lovely viewers I, the, I think the final thing is, I think it's the practice of loving your, yourself. That's what makes you attractive in a sense that loving yourself, knowing what you want, because even when you were saying about, you kind of might let things loose or boundaries with other people, you have to think, how are you, why are you doing that? Is it because there's something in you that wants to feel love or get something that you need from someone else? So, I, so going away is this practice on loving yourself because you know, they say, yeah, yeah, I love yourself. It won't get me someone. But if you love yourself, you start attracting other people and you start choosing who you want to be in your world. There's some people you can't choose, but this love, this start loving yourself. And then you'll see, you'll see such a change because it's a reflection, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Love yourself. I mean, look, the self-love thing is non-negotiable. Absolutely. Mm. And Yvonne, your final words. My final word is, it's something that um, both you and Unique said that I wanted to buttress, which is masculine men love the chase. They cannot find you sitting down, sipping coffee, come over, say hello, and you hand your number, call me later, you call and he does not want to know. If you have got to make it so difficult for him that he is going to try to walk on water to get to you. Because you know what? Unfortunately, no, fortunately, we're called black swans for a reason. (laughs) Where I live, um, less than 10 minute walk away, there is, um, it's a government building. It's got a beautiful stream, everything in it. There's fountains, the lot. And you see swans there, there's ducks and the swans are beautiful and the children are feeding them and everything. I've lived in this area now for nearly 10 years. I've yet to see one black swan, yet to see a black swan. And there's swans there daily. They come, they bring them there, they take them up. The swans in this country are owned by the crown. You can't kill a swan. You can't touch a swan because it's owned by the crown. But I've yet to see a black one. 
And that's the reason why we're black swans, because we're hard to find. Mm. And because we're hard to find, that means that we've done the work. So you can come and pretend to be Johnny Go Lately. We're not going to fall for you because the work that we've done, we've seen through the nonsense that you're <laughs> speaking. Mm. And when you're talking to us and thinking that, you know, I'm in, the reason why you can think you're in is because we're very polite. We mm. don't, you know, uh, shout. We don't. Um, you know, have um, open and hostile disagreement with anybody. We will listen intently to everything you've got to say, not at the right place, smile in the right place, and also oh very beautifully say, thank you very much, but no, thank you. You enjoy the rest of your life. And we mean it because you're certainly not for us. So if you're looking for a black swan, all things are not created equally. So if somebody says, oh, but I'm black swan, <laughs> you will know them by their deeds, which mm. is what the word tells us. You will know us by our deeds. So don't be fooled by, we as black swans are not fooled by the men that have uh, presented themselves. And men, when you're out there and you're looking and she says, oh, but I'm a black swan, oh, so <laughs> politely. And then you look at the way she's dressed and unfortunately, <laughs> it, it's not no, correct. It's no, it's not. it so isn't. So don't be fooled <laughs> the same way as you. Um, we don't want to give them the wrong impression. They don't want to get the wrong impression of us. So if you know that you want to be um, pursued don't make it easy absolutely I love it if you want to be irresistible let's get the style together okay okay <laughs> and I I cannot emphasize this enough we think that being good people inside is enough not in this day and age there was a time when all the man had to be was rich yes not in this day and age mm. Even wealthy men have to hit the gym. Even wealthy men have to make an effort because the competition has gone up because looking attractive mm -hmm. is easier now than it has ever been in days gone by. So we are not in that era where you go to your church and your pastor says, the beauty of your heart is enough for you <laughs> to change the world. We've got somebody <laughs> on our recording in the back. Hello, say hi. <laughs> As you go to hear us. <clears throat> the beauty of it's us realizing that you know we we have to do the inner and outer work it cannot be one or the other and I'm learning a bit of humility lately um I a lot of us feel like I've I've done a styling course right so I can be a stylist if I wanted to however I will always defer to a professional. I'll defer mm. to Eek. I'll be like, hey, this is what I want to wear. What do you think? Do you think this goes with that? I am, you know, very well versed and very well trained in a lot of, you know, kind of uh, modalities of handling trauma, but I will still get a, a trauma therapist. I am very good with dating strategy, but when I'm dating, I have a dating coach. It's really about the humility of realizing mm. that if the professionals themselves need a professional, how about your lay behind? Mm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> how about you? So I hope that this episode and this um, recording was helpful and that you got everything out of it and that you are going to walk away feeling a little bit more irres irresistible. And obviously, if you want more, we've got the Mastering Attraction Masterclass. We have the Flirt and Date Masterclass. We have the Dating Playbook for girls who want to win in the dating life. And of course, we have all these beautiful coaches sitting here looking at you who are more than happy to take your call energy mastery as well so you can energy mastery feminine mastery feminine mastery <laughs> and don't forget oh the most important one of all nice girl rehab, rehab. and nice girl reload because you know what mm. you can't be a nice girl all your life if you want um, to get your oh place. nice girls do not show up as irresistible thank you for that oh. i mean look the we have ultimate a one yeah. The ultimate one is soulmate attraction system. Soulmate oh, attraction system. Yes. <laughs> you have access to all. 
<laughs> that is the game changer and we're loving the group coaching going on right now it's so yeah. so 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 powerful what's happening in the group right now and i want you to get your little pennies ready and get your hearts positioned because the next group coaching course will be coming up quite quickly believe it or not things mm. move quite fast so you got six weeks before we launch the group coaching again mm -hmm. so you, if you're thinking of being on the soulmate attraction system course you want to start planning your time you want to start planning your finances because this is going to be absolutely transformative so here yeah. at the black screen Nation academy there is nothing that you need that we have not already supplied whether it's a conversation with a coach whether it is a course whether it's group coaching there is no reason whatsoever mm -hmm. you should be ignorant okay we want you to mm -hmm. win we want black swans to find black swan men to have black swan babies so that even though we will continually be rare at least <laughs> be spotted where Yvonne lives yeah. okay. yeah. <laughs> at least one of us <laughs> and there's a couple more that we uh for, we haven't mentioned is we also uh do couples counseling or couples yeah. coaching and uh, we um welcome men one and all welcome yeah. men men you can yeah, come you Everyone. can you can you are welcome i know that the website says girls feminine energy and talks about girls a lot we'll be working on that uh but we do want you to feel free mm -hmm. to book a discovery call with us and let us help you out because we do have some extraordinary gentlemen who are coaching with us at the moment and we are yeah. absolutely transforming their love lives as well so what can i say we'll see you on our next video in the meantime take yeah. care of you and bye bye Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 <laughs>